What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another uh, episode of This Brother Talks. Uh, again, my name is Tony Crawford. Uh, I just come to you every Monday, say around 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern, and I give my uh, personal opinion on, you know, certain sports topics and, you know, all of that good stuff. So, you know, uh, I got a host of topics and everything that we're going to talk about today. Um, and, you know, a lot of it is going to be, you know, some basketball related, um, you know, coaching hiring. and we're going to talk a little bit about Alex Felix and um, Shakara Richardson and all that, you know, so uh, just going to touch on them a little bit. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, um, so we're going to get everything started and we're going to start out by um, by discussing Allison Felix. Uh, she flexes on Nike, in my personal opinion. Uh, Allison Felix was dropped by Nike in 2019 uh, because she was pregnant. And, you know, they wanted to pay her uh, like 70 percent less than what she was, what her contract was. And um, my personal opinion on this right here is uh, if Allison Felix would have been a man, they would have been like, uh, we're going to work with her. We're going to take our time. And they would have kept paying her. They might not pay them full, but they probably would have dropped it, you know, probably about 20, 30 percent. Um, and now, you know, she had a baby. A baby was, you know, was was born um, ill and, you know, she took care of, you know, had to take care of a child or whatever, which that's what a mother does. And now she comes back, she runs and she makes the Olympics. And now whoever this Nike exec is, <clears throat> has to be kicking themselves right now. And I wouldn't be surprised this person didn't have a job or got demoted because that was one of the worst decisions you could have made. Just because, you know, somebody goes out and get pregnant and all that, doesn't mean that they're going to lose a step. They still going to train after they have, you know, that baby and everything. Uh, she comes back and now she's starting her own, you know, from my understanding, her own uh, clothing line, shoe line and everything. And I think... That's the ultimate flex to Nike because why drop this lady whenever she was very profitable for you guys, you know, during the time that she was um, that she was um, uh, with Nike. And I mean, she's one of the most well-known, you know, track stars in the U.S. right now. Uh, well, not even just right now, but for, you know, for some years now. And so. Um, uh, what did Neil say? Neil says, "Hey, hey, hey, Neil, that that that's a hell of a point, man. They they could have marketed the hell out of that. That's that's what they could have done. They could have marketed the hell out of that. That that would have been a, a, a freaking steal for them, and that would have took them a very very long way to show that you know they they support you know women and being in pregnancy and stuff and still." being able to be athletes and everything. And, you know, cause nowadays, you know, it used to be, it used to be that, you know, women, you know, didn't really, if they play sports, they play sports, but if they was a mom, they was a mom and, you know, you couldn't be both, but now women are showing that they can do both. I can be a mother and I can still be great at what sport I play in. And I think that that would have been the ultimate flex by Nike, but now she is, flexing on them because she's starting her own thing now and don't think that somebody ain't going to pick it up. Um, um, so my, my, my thing is, is like, um, they, 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 they could have, they could have done this right here. Appreciate you checking in Charles cause, uh, on Janet too, but yeah, they could have used that and marketed the hell out of it. Like, you know, I didn't even look at it, that aspect, aspect Neil, but like, I'm just looking at it as, why drop her because she's pregnant like you know she she she's gonna come back out I'll, I'll she never said that she was gonna stop or anything like that so you know my thing is that that's the ultimate flex on them i think that she is going to be um uh she's gonna be the winner in all of this because at the end of the day <clears throat> her stuff is gonna sell people are gonna look at it that way and She's marketing it that way because when you see when you see uh, um, you see that you know her commercials and stuff, her child is in it, and then you know they got commercials showing that her child was you know was born ill or whatever, and she 
you know, did what she had to do to take care of a child. And now her child is, you know, you know, well and healthy. So now she's back running. And I, I just say shout out to her. Like, I think that is, you know, the ultimate flex to come back and just be like, um, yeah, I, I agree with you there. Run what you do for me now, not late, you know, lawyers. So yeah. But, you know, like I said, it's loyalty. It would have been loyalty to the men, but not the women, because I don't think that they looked at her coming back. Like all they saw was the pregnancy and all that good stuff, because I done seen guys go through stuff and they just say, hey, what we're going to do is we're monitoring the situation like, you know, you know, you know, issues with you know, that them off the field and stuff like that. They will be like, oh, we're monitoring the situation. You know, we're not going to drop them. And so they will monitor that situation. That situation might go on longer than nine months and they'll still keep them on, still pay them and all that good stuff. Um, so, um, you know, shout out to Allison Felix. All right. And so we're going to move right along. We're going to talk about uh, our, our, our next lady. And our next lady is uh, Shakara Richardson. Uh, this young lady is fast as hell. That's all I can really say about her. And my reasoning for getting on her is because when you see her, I've, I've seen you know many of topics about this young lady. And from what she looks like, what her hair is, you know, you know, all this type of stuff. And like my issue is with her is um is this right here. Let this woman be great. If she want to wear orange hair, pink hair, purple hair, if she want that her to be turquoise, I don't care. Maybe that's the way she wants to fashion herself and show herself off. Because just because you wouldn't do it don't mean it's, it's right or wrong. This young lady wants to wear her. I mean, I mean it's, it's basically she's making a statement with her hair. I make statements with my watches and I make statements with, with my shoes and stuff like she's making a statement with her hair. And then, you know, for some people to be talking about for her to be that fast, she got to be a man. And it's because, you know, she don't have big boobs and stuff like that. But she, she 21 years old. She's skinny as hell already, but she's muscular. And then she work out all the time. And if anybody knows anything about, you know, body fat and working out, you know, most of the breasts is body fat. She don't have any body fat. That my thing is, if that's what she wants to do, yeah. And then you know the tattoos too, Aunt Jenny. Yeah, the tattoos too. And I and and I really wasn't going to touch on the tattoos because at the end of the day, everybody has tattoos. You watch guys with tattoos all the time. You know, LeBron James got tattoos. Kevin Durant got tattoos. You look at Allen Iverson when he was playing. He uh, full of tattoos, you know, it's just tattoo, tattoo, tattoo. But if this woman wants to, you know, celebrate herself with hair um, and, you know, and, and, and do all that stuff, let her do it. Like she is being her. And at the same time, while she's being her, she's being great. Like, and she's showing that she can be herself and, and still, and still be one of the fastest people in the world, if not the fastest. Uh, what Charles say? Charles just says something. Like, uh, she is showing you can be who you are and make something of yourself. That's inspiring for a lot of young people. Exactly. It is, Charles. Like, it's very inspiring. Like, you could be who you are. And like a lot of people say, like, her hair and, you know, people asking how she, you know, my wife asks, like, I, I don't want to care. I don't care what, what, what she doing with her. All I want to know is what she using to keep it in place. Because if I decide to put some hair in there, that's that's what I need, and I, and I feel that, like <laughs> you know. Um, and um, yes, I Janet, that's another. One. I was about to touch on that. They talked about Flojo doing that. Flojo had big hair too, and all that. Just talked about being a man, and like I just don't understand where that comes from. Just because she's fast and faster than everybody else, maybe I mean she just work on a craft. And like what some people fail to realize is when people come from certain environments. That's what they do. Like some people, like we had some people that play basketball. We had some people play baseball. We had some people that were just fast as hell. They ran and that's what they did. Like, you know, and that's probably what she did growing up. And then, you know, this, this, you know, sometimes people are in bad situation and this situation 
that she was in and now you know she's running and stuff that might have been her way out of the bad situation she was in because you know I, and I'm, I don't know everything about her history with her parents, not, but from my understanding, she was raised by her grandmother. That says a lot to me right there, because if you were raised by your grandmother, a lot of times, you know, grandma might be a little bit older from what it seems to me. It ain't like she had a whole lot of money. So that means that, you know, she didn't grow up with a whole lot of wealth. So this might be her way of getting out. And she want to express herself with hair and people complain about that or tattoos. I don't see nothing in there about her doing off the, you know, track stuff, you know, getting in trouble, you know, doing all kind of wild stuff. This woman going out there running her ass off and she doing it to the best of her abilities. And I think that, you know, other young females should look up to her because this shows that, just because you're not a man, you can still be the fastest at what you do because she's faster than a lot of men, plain and simple. It's that simple. Like she is one of the fastest people in the world. And I'm looking forward to seeing her in the Olympics in Tokyo. Like it's going to be interesting just to see her run. And because this, this, this woman is unbelievably fast. So I applaud her for expressing herself the way she want to express herself. Like, you know, a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people express themselves in different ways. Like, you know, and just because I express myself in watches, socks, and shoes, doesn't make it any different. Her expressing herself in her hair. She want to change the color of her hair. That's perfectly fine with me. She want to have tattoos. That's 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 her. Like, you know, I, I wish people would stop with the stereotypes and stop trying to find excuses about stuff just because you know, a certain person is a certain skin color or they're female or anything like that, because ultimately this is the way I look at it. And she is great regardless of what color her hair is, how many more tattoos she put on and how small and, and, and no matter how small her boobs is. You look at a lot of these athletes that that's going to the Olympics, like swimmers and stuff like they don't have boobs. So what? Like, you know, some people just don't have big breasts, plain and simple. So, you know, I wish people would get off that stuff and, you know, and just let this woman be great. All right. So we're going to move right along and I'm going to get into the NBA, uh, getting a job in the NBA. I, I, I'm looking at that because uh, we have seen a little coaching carousel in the NBA from Rick Carlisle telling, you know, um, Mark Cuban and the, the Dallas Mavericks that, you know, he wasn't going to be back next year. And, you know, so they had to go through a coaching search. And uh, me and my brother was talking, I think, before they let Stan Van Gundy go, it was like six or seven positions that were open uh, before they let Stan Van Gundy go from um, from the Pelicans. Uh, it was like six or seven positions. We was wondering, you know, because it, it, it always comes up about, you know, blacks getting positions and, and coaching and empowering and stuff like that. So we was wondering how many – did we think would get uh how many blacks would get coaching jobs and i told him out of that six before this before stan van gunn i said you know i say one maybe two i said two at the most and so you know so far rick carlisle left dallas and went to indiana which that was a shocker to me i thought he was gonna wait it out and end up with somewhere like if milwaukee didn't you know, get to the finals that, you know, he could, you know, get Bootenholzer a job because, you know, Bootenholzer don't get past Atlanta, then I think it's time for him to go. Like, I think it's been time for him to go. I just think, you know, this year it's a lot of stuff that's happening that's going to help him keep his job now, you know, from the Nets being injured, now, you know, the Hawks being young and Trey Young getting hurt and all that good stuff. But then, you know, we got Jason Kidd who – uh now is the Dallas Mavericks coach. And Jason Kidd has some stuff in the past. I think it was like 2001, early 2000s, where he had some, uh, I think he had a DUI, and then he had some domestic violence stuff. And, you know, I, I'll talk about that in a minute, but he had that issue. But now he's the Dallas Mavericks coach. And, you know, I think it's deserving of him. I think that, you know, he was a head coach one time before. He's been an assistant for some years now. And I think, you know, it, it, you know, he, he, he should be good as a as a head coach again. And then we had Chauncey Billups, and Chauncey Billups is now 
the head coach of the Portland Trailblazers. And they dug up some stuff on Chauncey Billups from 1997. And it was an allegation of like sexual assault or rape or something like that. And here's my issue with that. Like, it, 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 it never fails how some stuff comes out during the time when somebody is about to to get, you know, a position or something like that. And I, I and one, I don't condone sexual assault. I don't condone rape or anything like that. I don't condone, you know, the DUIs or, you know, anything like that. So let's get that straight. But if it was an allegation in 97 and the allegation is, like I said, it's an allegation and it's the ran its course. You didn't find out what happened. The guy was never charged. Why is that stuff coming up now? Because, I mean, 97, 2007, 2017, and we got four more years. That's 24, almost 25 years ago. And we're talking about something. And, like, this is the way I look at things in life and everything. Regardless of who you are, how rich, how poor, how, you know, famous, uh, you know, not so famous. We all got skeletons. And if push came to shove, we went back and did some, and, uh, did some digging. It'll bring out some stuff on everybody that, you know, people really don't, you don't want people to know. And again, I don't condone the stuff that happened, but I think sometimes it's just time to let stuff go. And instead of doing all this digging whenever it comes to somebody, because you want to be politically correct because some people bring it up. like, And that's the thing that kills me. You get fans that bring up stuff. You get people that bring up stuff and like they don't realize, like, go look at your past. And I guarantee you got some stuff in it. But I don't think something should be brought up 25 years ago when he was never charged. You know, same in, in Jason Kidd's situation, I mean, whatever happened to him, it happened. It's over and done with. You can't expect, like, just because somebody's going to try to get a, a, a coaching job that you can just say, okay, well, he got to be perfect. Then nobody would get a job. Hell, Marv Alba had his issues, but we had to listen to his ass for 56 years. You know? Uh, yeah. yeah, Neil, you said cancer culture, it comes for us all. You are correct. They dig back as far as they need to. Yeah. And yeah, like the cancer culture, like, and that, 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 that made me really think of something. Um, um, Charles Barkley, they saying Charles Barkley said he might, he might, um, he might stay at TNT for another two years. He said, because it's not fun anymore. Because cancel culture has come for them, too, because, you know, he's saying he used to go on there and talk about the fat women from San Antonio and stuff like that. And like Charles Barkley, out of all the people in the world, he can talk about fat people. He fat. He talk about himself. And then that show is just predicated on people having fun, like the people who who, you know, get into that show. They be showing their stuff on TV and stuff like that. Like they just be clowning Kenny and Charles and uh and all that good stuff. And like, you know, it's just not fun. And I and I don't like the council culture either because you know, just because somebody did like and I guarantee these people who who are doing this, they got some skeletons in their closet. Nobody in this world is perfect. <laughs> Let's see what Charles said. Charles said if everybody past determined their present success, it would be a lot of who would be in trouble. Charles, we all will be in trouble. We all will be in trouble. Hey, Chris, I, hey, look, I'm, I'm on Charles Barkley's side this time. Um, and Charles, you all races, ethnicities, and or you right. And that's what people fail to realize, cuz, is that, you know, if we if we brought up everybody's past, then we all will be screwed. Like, this world would be a mess. Wouldn't nobody have jobs? Because I guarantee you some CEO or some company, he done did some stuff back in the past. But it's just sickening that they still bring up stuff like this after years and years and years and years of stuff. And the allegations and like 
if it was an allegation, then somebody, anybody can make an allegation about somebody. I can make an allegation about you right now. I can say, oh, Charles is the biggest racist in the world. My brother Chris is the biggest racist in the world. My friend Neil is the biggest racist in the world. And just because I make the allegation doesn't make it true. And, you know, people can go do their research and they can do all that stuff and they can find out that it wasn't true. And, you know, Charles, Chris and, and Neil are not racist and all that good stuff. But then 20 years from now, it'll come back up. Man, they such and such said you was a racist. We got to go back and investigate that. What for? Like, if these people deserve jobs, Chauncey Billups has played in the NBA. He's done some commentary work. And, you know, a lot of people thought he was going to go into um, into the front office. But he's going into coaching. And, you know, my thing is, if the guy deserved a job, get a guy a job. He don't have nothing going on right now. He passed his background check. He played in the NBA for umpteen years. He's a finals MVP. And this stuff didn't come up then. But now he's can be in a person of power. Now you want to bring this type of stuff up. Like it, it's just time out for that stuff. Like it's time out for it. Like, and I applaud, you know, Mark Cuban for hiring Jason Kidd. I applaud, applaud the Trailblazers for hiring Chauncey Billups, even through all of this. But I don't think an investigation should have been done because if you go up somewhere and you fill out an application, you put your social security number down and you pass your background check, you ain't got nothing going against you like that. Then what's the purpose of doing an investigation on anything? That should be enough of an investigation right there. It should be like plain and simple. Stop making up excuses because if you look at some stuff, we were talking about, I was talking stuff about some friends with some friends today. And, and I'm, I'm going to touch on, a, a, I'm going to touch on this person in a little bit, but you know, they were saying some stuff about about him and like, but this person we consider is one of the greatest coaches of all time. But some of the comments he made, I guarantee nobody didn't investigate any of that stuff. They just kept on letting him play and paid him 10, 15 million dollars a year. No questions asked. Then he go to an executive role and get paid 15, 20 million dollars a year. And then he just do a horrible job and walk away. And if you know sports, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. But, you know, I just think it's time out for all this stuff. I, I, I'm, ha I'm happy Chauncey Billups. I think he's one of the most deserving guys to get um, to get a job uh, in the NBA. He's a humble guy. You know, I, I met Chauncey and talked to Chauncey and all that good stuff. As a matter of fact, um, I need to hit, you know, his agent up because – I, I can't remember who won the I think I owe Chauncey dinner. I think I owe him some dinner. So, you know, we got to get together. Uh, what y'all say? Uh, I need, I meant to discuss him too. Uh, Charles, me personally, I think Boston is a bad, bad situation simply because of this right here. He can go in and be a good coach. I think he's done. He uh, he's done put in his time as an assistant, and he's respected by a lot of players in the NBA. Um, but I think the dysfunction in Boston begins with the guy who's doing the hiring, because how do you go from not being able to manage a team of twelve to fifteen players and get burnt out from the bubble? to go and having to run a whole organization, you know, signing free agents, keeping players there and all that good stuff. That's where the dysfunction is at. So if I think Boston's situation is this right here, Boston knew that they did some, some shady stuff by uh, uh, Danny Ainge, you know, call itself retiring and stepping down and Brad Stevenson, Brad Stevens going from, um, a coach to president of basketball operations after doing a shitty job as a coach for the last few years. So, you know, he, he you know, he got a, a, a promotion by not doing a good job. And I think that's where the dysfunction starts at in Boston. So I really don't think who care who you bring in. It's going to be hard to do that whenever you got somebody like Brad Stevens leading the organization. So 
in order for Boston to get better and, and that dysfunction to come, somebody has to have a strong voice. And if Boston let Brad Stevens be over everything and micromanage everything, because that's what happens in a lot of these organizations, then you're going to lose Tatum in a few years. You're going to lose Jalen Brown in a few years. Um, um, you're going to lose everything. And I think Brad Stevens is going to be a reason of all of that. And so with that being said, he can, if he, if, if he's able to run the team or organization the way he wants to, if it's ran the way Brad Stevens wanted, then, you know, it's going to be ran with arrogance. It's going to be ran with, you know, I, I don't care attitude because I'm a white guy and I can do whatever I want to do because I don't have to be good. And they're not going to get rid of me because they promised me this whenever I sign my contract. And that's the way I look at the whole Brad Stevens situation. And so I wish well if, they, you know, they hire him and all that because it would be a great look. But I felt like they was going to hire a black coach simply because of what they did, because everybody was calling it, you know, white privilege, which I mean, that's what it was. It was privileged by Brad Stevens because no coach who's done a, a black coach has done a mediocre job or, and, and, and moved up in the ranks. And some people try to use Doc Rivers for that. They was trying to say, oh, Doc Rivers was a GM and the coach, and then they demoted him. They took the GM position, but he kept his his, bat, his coaching job. Yeah, you got demoted. He didn't get promoted. That's a big fucking difference. Excuse my language. But, you know, I, I wish him well. I hope things work out for him, and, you know, but because like Boston has a chance to have a really good team. But my issue with that is no matter who they bring in, it's going to be hard for the win because if, if the Brooklyn Nets come back next year and if Brooklyn Nets come back next year and Kevin Durant 100 percent, Kyrie 100 percent, James Harden 100 percent, they pick up a couple other pieces or whatever and they stay healthy. It's going to be hard for Boston then to beat them. Plain and simple. Um and so we're gonna move right along, and so we're gonna to get to talk about the um, the the Bucks up two one in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, the Bucks took a two one lead last night, you know, and I, I'm gonna just be honest with you guys right now. I don't think the I think the Bucks has a good team. I'm not a fan of Bootenholzer, and I'm not a fan of the Greek Freak. I'm not a fan of Antetokounmpo. I feel like you know this guy. Uh, all he does is dunks and layups. When he has to shoot, it's just awful. It is god awful. Like just watching his shot is just scary to me. Like it, 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 it just scares me to see him shoot the basketball. Um, and I'll say this right: Chris Middleton is the best player on the team. Uh, anybody can say it differently, but he shows it. If you take Chris Middleton off that team, then Antetokounmpo won't get the dunks. He won't get the layups because Chris Middleton does spread the floor. He has to be accounted for. And if you watch the guy, a lot of people try to compare uh, Chris Middleton and, 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 and Giannis to, you know, the way Shaq and Kobe was, you know, uh, uh, Shaq would dominate for 46 minutes. The last two minutes, Kobe took over. That's, that's two totally different because like those guys did it back and forth and like Shaq, had to be accounted for. But, like, if you take – even if you took Kobe off the team, Shaq still had to be accounted for. You take Chris Middleton off that team, who, who what is Giannis going to do? Not a doggone thing. <laughs> Horrible coaching players don't listen to him. I agree. <laughs> so, you know, my thing is um, I don't I, – I didn't think this would be a, a good series in the first place. I thought Nate McMillan had the Hawks playing real good and – for what they really had, but I didn't think that this would be a series because I thought the Bucks were the far more superior team. They had just a little bit more. And with Trey Young getting hurt last night, they say he got a bone bruise in his foot. Um, I just think they're in a lot of trouble now. Um, um, yeah, Charles, you know, Middleton, he does, he's skilled and disappears sometimes. I'm rooting, for, I'm rooting for him too, but I think that has – a lot to do with the coaching because they don't put them in the right situations because they play basketball surrounded by Giannis. And that's just, let's get up and down the floor and let him try to get to the basket and bulldoze people and all that good stuff. I think that's the problem with them. They don't have 
any offensive flow a lot of times whenever they do have offensive flow flow you see how he plays and like watched him last night he he got in the zone they called some sets for him he was able to knock down shots i mean he's big enough to shoot over the top of people he's skilled enough to do that i just feel like they don't play to his strengths all the time it's more it's more to Giannis's, you know i'm gonna say strengths but you know Giannis's way of playing and i feel like if they use militant more and you know focus around him it will open it up for Giannis so much more then you know i think that Giannis has to develop a jump shot first of all because if the nets were at full strength you would have saw it um the hawks showed it the first game like you know and then I just don't know if Trey if Trey Young doesn't play. I think the Hawks are done uh, in four, plain and simple. It, I mean, in five, and and and, and they'll be done four one. But in, in five games, they'll be done. Um, if he comes back, it might be different, but they'll he'll be kind of hobbled because that uh, that bone bruise is really nothing to play with. So you know, we'll see what happens there. They play tomorrow night, if I'm not mistaken, in Atlanta. So and that might be you know a gift and a curse because. You know, they won game, they took back home court advantage in game three. But, you know, you can go to Atlanta and start living that nightlife and come back game four. And, you know, Trey Young could start feeling better, foot start feeling better, and this series could drag out. But, you know, I I, I think that if Trey Young doesn't play, he's not 100% that Atlanta goes down uh, in game four and then loses in game five. So, I mean, we'll see what happens there. All right. And so we're going to stay in basketball, but we are going to talk about uh, old basketball. Scotty Pippen speaking out. I have um, – um, wait a minute. Before I get into that, Charles said they need somebody who makes John to stop bringing up the ball to the court. It's so frustrating to watch. You just need to post up, pick and roll. Charles, you, I, I say it all the time, man. It's just ridiculous. Like, you know, they, they want him to play – a certain way, but that's not the way he should play. Like, get a basketball up, go post up. He shouldn't be shooting nothing. Like, I mean, work on your turnaround jump shot, work on your mid range and stuff like that. Quit trying to shoot on damn threes and trying to be a point guard. That's what they really want to be. They want him to be, you know, compliments to, you know, LeBron and KD and those guys. He's just not them, plain and simple. He's nowhere close to any of those guys, nowhere close to any of them. So, all right, so we're going to move along, and we're going to talk about um, God damn it, uh, Scotty Pippen speaking out. Uh, Scotty Pippen has said that he's, he's wrote a book. Um, I think it's called Unguarded, and he's made a lot of comments here lately about, you know, Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson and, you know, all types of stuff like that. He's been in a whole bunch of interviews and stuff like that. And so he's saying that he's going to tell his side of the story Um whenever it comes to the the Bulls dynasties in in the 90s and everybody knows I'm a Michael Jordan fan but just as much as I was a Jordan fan I was a Scottie Pippen fan because when Pippen came into his own I mean that was the best one-two punch in, in my that that I've seen in the NBA period you know to win six championships and the way they played together and, and Scottie Pippen was the first like point forward that that we had and for him to start speaking out now and I, I was talking to the friends we all be on the same page about a lot of stuff but you can tell when when pippen uh is in jordan i'm not seeing eye to eye on stuff because he had a tendency to start talking about lebron he made some comments saying you know lebron won championships with no help which that's bull crap i mean he won two with D Wade and Chris Bosch. He won one with Kyrie, and then he won one with Anthony Davis. If those ain't nobody's, then you're right, Pippen. But now he's coming out. I heard an interview where, well, I heard before he had said that he didn't like the documentary about you know the uh, the Last Dance because you know it would glorify Michael Jordan. And Truth be told, it wouldn't have been the last dance if it weren't for Michael Jordan. That's that's who people really came to see play. Pippen was, you know, the Robin to his to Jordan to Jordan, 
And and don't get me wrong, I, like I said, I think Pippen was one one of my favorite and best players, you know, that come through the nineties or whatever. But for him to speak out now, I think it looks like he might be a little bit bitter. He seems like a, a bitter baby mama about a whole lot of things. And during the the last dance, he had this opportunity to correct some stuff and make some stuff right. But he said that, you know, if he had to do it all over again, he'd do it the same way. So my question about that, when Tony Kukoc took that last shot to Phil Jackson, set it up for him and Pippen's supposed to have been taking the ball out. He made some comments this week saying that, you know, Phil Jackson, that was a racist thing that he was doing. He put Tony, he, he basically put Tony Kukoc in a situation because he was, you know, white or whatever. And, um, but in my personal opinion, I think that Pippen looks bitter and the two people that he's speaking out on looks better in the situation than he does simply because one, they're not speaking out on it Two, uh, the, the, what he's talking about with Phil Jackson, when Tony Kukoc hit that shot, he decided not to go into the game. If Tony Kukoc hit the game with him. So Phil Jackson, looked like he was right in that situation. Um, and then the whole Michael Jordan thing, and he's saying he was the, the, the true leader, which I don't think that Pippen wasn't a leader on the Bulls. I think with Michael Jordan's way of leading, Pippen was a voice of reason in leadership roles. So like when Jordan was in everybody's ass, Pippen was one of those guys that kind of smoothed things out so you do have leaders like he smoothed it out so you know guys wouldn't you know because jordan seemed like he was a bulldog and pippen seemed like he was more of the the calm demeanor type guy that you know just brushed everything under the rug and kind of helped smooth things out whenever jordan was too hard on guys so was he a leader yes could he have corrected some of that stuff and spoke his mind on some of that stuff during the last dance? Yes. Now some of the stuff he's bringing out, he said to him and Jordan, you know, were great on the court, but never had an off the court relationship. That's all well and good. You didn't see players like that before. Uh, to say the last dance made him look like a bad person. I didn't think it made him look like a bad person. I thought that, you know, it showed that whenever Pippen was young and, the Bulls struggled. They couldn't get past the Pistons. But once Pippen got stronger and mentally tougher, that took them over the top. When Jordan retired, he put himself in their own situation by not going into the basketball game. But as far as making him look bad, I didn't see Pippen as looking bad. I, I looked at him as, as being a lot of people saying that he was soft one time for him to you know play in that game where he had the back problem. Because remember, he had the migraine and 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 all that good stuff. Um, let's see what Charles got to say. He said Pippen feels some type of way, but he gets more credit than he realized. Everybody I talked to said it wasn't for him. Jordan wouldn't have achieved what he did, and vice versa. He just saw that Jordan is on the pedestal, and and Charles, that's what I say all the time. Um, um, I say this all the time, Charles, because. It's a lot of people. If Pippen would have said some of this stuff 20 years ago and I was talking to a friend, he was like, I don't know if that would have happened because of the power Jordan had still had in 2001. I said, Pippen, a six time champion. I said, and, you know, all the people who weren't Jordan fans, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, oh, Jordan would have won them championships if it weren't for Pippen. And Pippen get a whole lot of credit. And I think Jordan was one of the first one to give him credit. Like whenever he did his Hall of Fame speech, he said, in all those videos, you see Scottie Pippen. If it, you know, wouldn't be if Scottie Pippen wouldn't have all these championships. You know, all that good stuff. I mean, and then like a lot of people, and then I'm I'm not sure how true this is, but this was said. Whenever Jordan won finals MVPs, you know, they would give trophy and cars. He would always give Pippen, you know, a gift or something because truthfully, Pippen was his MVP. And that's the way he looked at it. that's that. And so I think now with social media, I think Pippen's a little salty about a few things. And I think that he really should let it go because I think he gets more credit, like you said, than what he realizes. Because without him, the Bulls wouldn't have had that dynasty. But we all do know that 
without Michael Jordan, the two, the one and a half years that he was out, the Bulls, you know, yeah, they went to, I think, the Eastern Conference uh, semifinals. The one year, the first year Jordan was out, and then the next year they were struggling to be above 500. He come back, and then they they lost again. You know, Jordan had only played like 15 games or whatever, and then they come back and go, you know, 72 and 10. So, um, so like my thing is that that I think he 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 I I feel the same way you feel, Charles. And he said, uh, Neil said, uh, watching MJ many times in person, MJ was hard ass, and it was clear everyone answered to him. As MJ learned to score less, the bull blossomed. Yeah, and I'm not even gonna say score less, Neil. I think that it was more about team oriented because whenever you, whenever they played up on the field, Jackson with the triangle, the triangle, the ball moved. All field wanted was movement, but with all the movement, where did the ball end up coming back to? It came back to Jordan. He still was a 30 point score. Period. I mean, plain and simple. But yeah, I agree with you, and I and I agree with you. He always uh, took Scotty with him. He always did. So. I think Scottie Pippen is speaking out now, and I think a lot of this is coming from the book. I think he wants to be, you know, a best-selling author. I think he wants the book to sell. So this is one of the better ways to get the book to sell him because if you you you, you start some controversy, people will want to go and read it and all that good stuff. And I'll be honest with you, I might be interested to read it. But, you know, me being a Bulls fan and me being, you know, a Jordan fan – and me, you know, being a Pippen fan, I watched all of that stuff go on over the years. And so, like, you know, I, I watched all the Bulls games. And we all know who the man was. We know Pippen was no slouch. And I just think that right now he's just trying to cause some controversy just to get his book to sell it whenever it comes out. Because as long as he keeps speaking and he calls Phil Jackson a racist because of what he did with Kami Kukoc, um, he said that, um, and so it was asked to him about, you know, didn't um, didn't a, a play was called for Steve Kerr in the finals, and Pippen said Jordan just said that for the cameras. We all knew the cameras were for Michael Jordan for him to, you know, do come fly with me and this, that, and the third, and all that good stuff. But you know, I think it's just causing a little controversy and all that good stuff. But he's the only one speaking because you notice Phil hadn't come back out and said nothing. Jordan hadn't come out and said nothing, which. I don't think Jordan will speak on it, but those two will probably hash it out at some point in time because regardless of what they had off the court, like they want the best of friends off the court, but they 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 had a brotherhood on the court. I think they'll talk about it and get everything worked out. So Pippen keep speaking. If that's what you want to do, and that's what that's the way you um that's the way you want to go about it. Get your book sales up, man. That's the way I look at it. All right, so we're gonna move right along and the Suns are up 3 1. If I'm not mistaken, they get ready to play here in a few minutes. Let's let me see what time that game starts. It starts, I think, because I'm I'm all on Central Standard Time and all that good stuff. But that game should be get ready to start at hey, what time does it start? Uh eight o'clock central. Oh, that game should have been came on. So, all right, we'll see what happened. Um, but um, they are up 3 1, and I am really, yeah, they, you right on, Jan. They probably haven't talked about it already. Make sure you're on the same note. You're right about that. But we are, the Suns up 3 1 over the Clippers. Um, and I think this series is it's far from over, but I think it's over. I think that, you know, the Suns will prevail because. The three games that the Suns have won, two without Chris Paul. They lost game three with Chris Paul coming back from off COVID. And then this last game they lost. And I mean, they 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 uh the Suns won. Chris Paul didn't shoot the ball particularly well. Devin Booker didn't have his his usual nights and all that good stuff. So and the and, and they still beating the Clippers. I, I I don't see Chris Paul having a bad game. I don't see Devin Booker having another bad game. I see them putting it together and moving on to the NBA Finals. Um, and Charles took the words right out of my mouth. I think I, I've been saying this. You, if anybody watched, I've been saying he's been the MVP of the league for the last two years. I want Chris Paul to win an NBA championship. That's what I want. And that's what I was thinking, Charles. The game should be great starting out. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it here in a little bit. But um, – but – I think the Suns can close it out tonight. Devin Booker plays well, and 
gets over that mass and the broken nose and Chris Paul just goes out and be Chris Paul and they knock down shots, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be trouble for the Clippers. Um the other thing is is like a lot of these people don't get enough credit. Uh, my biggest credit for the Suns, and if y'all watch it, I watch every aspect of the game. When, whenever Jay Crowder is guarding Paul George, he makes it hard for this dude, man. I like when he make it real hard. Like I, I, I watched Paul George one time. Um, um, yeah. He was trying to go to the basket. Drake J, J Crowder bumped the one time. Paul George picked that ball up and threw it back out. I said he don't want no parts of Jay Crowder, and that's what a lot of teams are missing. People like Jay Crowder, like Jay Crowder, might not score a lot. He might he he might not be in you know the you know in all the stats and all that good stuff, but he does all the little things, all the little things. So. I'm hoping they go out and win tonight and get to the finals because I want Chris Paul, a North Carolina native, to 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 finally, you know, get a chance to play in the finals or win the finals. That would be great for him. And, you know, it, along with his his career, right now they're down seven nothing. It looked like um looked like the the Clippers started out pretty hot right now. Seven seven nothing. Um so the 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 Suns better get it together before it become a route real quick. Um, but I have a question uh, in this series. Is it more Suns or Clippers that's that's, um, that's 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 winning and losing this series? And I think it's I think it's it might be half and half to me because if you watch the games, like you know. Paul George plays good, and then down the stretch, he shows that he's not as clutch as as, as he portrays to be. And then you got the Suns, who, you know, is unsung heroes like DeAndre Ayton, somebody who you didn't think would, would, you know, be this good this early in his career. And you just got, you know, unsung heroes and stuff. And then you got the Clippers – and I look at them as a bunch of guys who just want to outscore each other. You know, you got the Reggie Jacksons who's looking to score. You got um, Paul George who's looking to score. And then, um, you know, everybody else, the Morris twin, he looking to score. You know, they don't have like any big role players to me that that does the little thing besides the Patrick Beverly's who just like likes to antagonize people and foul and all that good stuff. And I just, I, I mean, I, I I hope the Clippers win. I mean, I hope the the Suns go ahead and knock off the clip the the Clippers tonight, and they can move on from you know this next topic I'm going to talk about. And so uh, I'm we gonna I'm gonna watch the game here a little bit, and I'm, I'm gonna see the Suns celebrate and win, be Western Conference champs. Um, my next topic is 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 gonna be. My final word, um, and my final word is going to be. Hold on for one minute. I made a mistake. Yeah, my final word is going to be this right here. Kawhi Leonard's knee, Kawhi's knee issues. Um, a lot of people may not look at this. No Kawhi and think Clippers are just outmatched. Suns role players are better on both sides of the ball. I agree with you. I, I agree with you, Charles. But Kawhi Leonard, to me, um, now it's been reports that came out to saying that he's not happy with um, he's not happy with the way the the Clippers have handled his knee problem. Doesn't this sound kind of familiar? Instead of just saying you want out, you make up excuses about, you know, issues with the training staff or the team and how they handled you and all that good stuff. But when is Kawhi Leonard going to hold himself accountable for anything? He he was in San Antonio. Oh, he didn't like the way the training staff and the Spurs handled his issue and his, his uh, injury. And he, he gets traded to Toronto, win a championship. He leaves Toronto because he wants to go to L.A. and have his own team. He wants to go take over L.A. 
He's been in LA and hasn't taken over LA yet. And now it's reports to come out that, you know, he's upset with the Clippers and saying that he's playing his last game for the Clippers, which I mean, I kind of figured it already because this same guy who wanted um, crazy money from, from, from team Jordan, because he wanted to be, you know, the, the face of, of the brand which they had already had a face in Russell Westbrook in which it was, you know, him being the face and all that good stuff. It was, it was good enough. And he wanted to make probably just as much as MJ himself because he felt like he was that good. He goes to the Clippers and says that he's taking over LA and he's the new King and hadn't showed that yet. But now he's upset with the Clippers about his knee issues. And I feel like this to me, the Clippers ain't got nothing to do with your knee issues. I feel like Kawhi little knee issues have been an issue for a long time. You watch him run, he I, I think he just has deteriorate knees. I think his knees are just that bad. It's just like one of those things that happen to some players, like, you know, that it comes around and his knees just do not hold up. And at the end of the day, we're going to see what's happening, and this is just reports that's coming out. But at some point in time, Kawhi Leonard has to hold himself accountable for the stuff that's going on in his camp in his in his career and him running from issues and running from situations is not going to be something that you know most organizations want to put up with me personally if i run the organization would i want somebody like that in my organization where he can just up and decide oh i don't want to play i want to be in control of this i want to low manage this and Whenever things don't go his way, oh, I don't like the way the team is handling my injury and I don't play my last game for him. You know, one, he holds the team hostage. Two, I'm going to be honest with you, the Clippers look better without him. They look more of a team. Are they better than the Suns? No. But they move the basketball more. Paul George looks more comfortable, you know, without him being on the court. And my thing is, if you're mad with the team for your knee issues, this just sounds like, you know, clockwork to me. The Suns, I mean, the, the Spurs were in the same situation. Everybody looked at the Spurs like the Spurs had did something wrong. So my question to everybody who was looking at the Spurs for doing something wrong, are y'all going to hold the Clippers accountable for Kawhi this time? Or are y'all going to finally say, oh, it's something in Kawhi, something in his camp, was something I've been saying for a long time. And, you know, for all the demands and stuff that he wanted, like, dude is 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 a good basketball player, but you don't see LeBron James and Kevin Durant asking for the demands that he's asking for. You know, the low management, wanting this person, if you, you know, to, to sign it or before he signs. If you can't get me this person, I'm going to go here. You know, I need this. I need that from, you know, from reports that I heard he, he wanted Toronto to get him you know, uh, private access to a jet so his family can get to and from. You know, it's, it's all types of stuff. He wanted stock in the team, you know, and anybody who leaves, you know, and we all know basketball, anybody who leaves Nike and Jordan for New Balance, then you got to take a look at that person. But that's another story for another day. And so, <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes, but you know, hey, that's my show for the day. I know the Suns and the Clippers are playing right now, and I was just looking at it. I was looking at it on my phone, trying to see what the score was. The score is thirteen to three. Uh, Devin Booker should be uh, shooting at the line right now. No, it's eighteen to five. It's just uh, eighteen to five. Uh, the 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 Clippers are playing real good tonight. We're gonna see if that holds up. But you know, no no lead is is safe in the NBA. Um, so, um, everybody who, you know, checked in, checked everything out. I appreciate you checking it out. Uh, I'll be back next Monday at seven 30 central, eight 30 Eastern, uh, with another host of topics. Hopefully we'll be able to talk about, you know, Western conference. I mean, the, the NBA finals and all that good stuff. Hey, um, um, <laughs> hard road left Nike for new balance. You're right. Yep. Hey, hey, Charles. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate you checking it out. Hey, everybody have a good night. Enjoy the basketball game. Have a good rest of your week, and I'll see you guys next week.